Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have in front of me um, three stroke four wines from Lidl. Oh, the reason it's three stroke four. Uh, Lidl has started doing this thing where, I think it's about five or six times a year, there'll be a new parcel of wines in. And uh, they're in, they're there, and when they've gone, they've gone. Uh, so this is a set of wines that's uh, on, due to go on sale 24th of November 2016. Uh, we're about a month before that now, so uh, I've got a, a, a early look at them. Uh, and I thought, I, 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 I couldn't make their press tasting. I said, well, any chance of having a look at the four Italian reds that, uh, that you've got on show? And they said, sure, sure. Uh, so four bottles duly arrived. I held one up to uh, the light and I thought, this doesn't look very red to me. Uh, so the first one, that that was a um, the Falangina Beneventano uh, from Sassi del, del Mare, uh, 2015 vintage. Uh, so white wine made from the Falangina grape. Uh, one thing you'll notice about it is that, oh dear, there's not much left in there. It's um, because I thought, I'm, I'm, I only one really wanted to do the red wines for this video. Um, the fourth one, there was supposed to be a Chianti Classico, but it's not around at the moment. So uh, maybe one day it'll arrive, and, uh, but it's not there at the moment. Um, but this, we opened it the other night, uh, and uh, it was absolutely delicious, about eight quid. And it's one of those wines that, um, it's amazing how far Italian white wines have come in the last few years. What was good about it, lots of flavour. Uh, Falangina is one of these slightly, um, it, it, these grapes that have, uh, fruit is maybe not uh, all that they're about. Uh, there's fragrance, there's floral character, but there's the, the good ones also have this really lovely mouthfeel. You feel like there's something, and it's not tannin that you're swilling around your mouth, uh, but there's a real presence there. Uh, so there was this nutty character, there was the fruit, a little bit of light nectarine peach, and uh, uh, it was delicious. And I thought, well, oh, I might try that little bit that dribbled in there. But yeah, it still smells great. A little bit of marzipan in there too. Um, and that's after about three days. Um, marzipan and peach, very nice, but with this texture. Um, so um, it, it, it was, it was making me think, okay, well, looking forward to these uh, three red wines. So they are from uh, prestigious places. Let's just dig in and see what they are all like. Uh, I think I'm, I'm doing them in uh, reverse price order. So the Barolo is, I think it's about 15 quid. Uh, there is a Bulgari, which is about 13. And then there's an Amarone to finish, which is about 12 and a half. Uh, if they're wrong, you'll see stuff flashed up on the screen about them. So this is the 2009 Barola Reserva. Uh, and um, no, it's one of those that it's not all that uh, forthcoming about who the producer is, but um, it's Lidl's Barolo. Well, proper colour. Uh, also, when I smell it, it smells like it's not... Uh, something that's uh, trying to overwhelm you with newness, as in that they've made something and then thought, oh, so we've got, we've got a customer, let's plonk, some, uh, plonk it in an oak barrel to, uh, uh, to tart it up a bit. It does smell, it's, and I don't think it's to do with uh, the peachy wine I had in before, but it does smell like there is this uh, uh, gentle peach character about it. There's some plum, a little bit of violet in there too, um, uh, and it smells like it's going to be on that gentle but um, persistent side. Slightly green, earthy tannins, this rounded um, plum, strawberry fruit with this touch of peach in there. Um, it's not great, but Barolo at fifteen pounds. I don't think you've got a right to expect it um, uh, it to be great. It's an okay advert for Barolo. There's a slight smokiness uh, coming through on the finish. Uh, maybe I, whenever I see people uh, trying to put a prestigious appellation on a shelf at an expensive price, uh, sorry, at a cheap price, I sometimes think that, we would, uh, that the drinking public would be better served by going for a less ambitious appellation uh, and a better wine from there, which you'd get at the same price. So good, but, well, just about good. It's okay. Next one. Uh, so this is Casato dei uh, Medici Rigati, Riccardi, uh, Bulgari 2013, uh, made from Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot and Petit Verdot. And um, let's give this one a whirl. There's a slightly charred edge here, and I don't know whether it's um, some of the grapes have either got that little bit overripe and started to shrivel, or it's a toasty character uh, coming from uh, slightly over toasted oak. Um, but it smells like there's going to be uh, a wealth of uh, that dark plummy berry fruit, bit of, bit of black currant, 
but there's also a hint of greenness there. Uh, I don't know whether that was the vintage talking. 2013 uh, maybe wasn't as ripe and, um, and fleshy as, uh, as uh, some other vintages, but um, and it could just be that the wine's on that little bit on the young side and needs a bit of time to come out of its shell. I've only just pulled the cork, so uh, it could be that uh, it just needs a little bit more swirling. So I'll do that. Juicy, rounded, that smoky oak character coming through. It's pretty decent wine, that. Um, and um, there's uh, there's this tannic grip and that green edge that uh, uh, I was getting there. It, there's still a little bit of that going on. And there's a little bit of heat from, uh, I think, alcohol um, and slightly raw wood. But I wouldn't be surprised if um, an hour or so from now that's calmed down and the fruit flavours have blossomed and those uh, other characters which are maybe intruding a little bit at the moment uh, have um, have been not overwhelmed by by the, the the expanding fruit, but are playing less of a main character than they are at the moment. Nice finish, uh, just that tinge of tinge of greenness. I'd be interested in seeing that from uh, uh, from better vintages, but um, uh, for for Bulgari, it's um, it's pretty decent at that price, thirteen quid. Uh, final one. Uh, this is Corte Allodola. Amarone uh, and 2012 vintage, weighing in at a 15.5% alcohol, which is par for the course for Amarone. Let's see what this one's like. Amarone for me is also one of those wines that has slight, become slightly uh, debased in recent times. There are, uh, Amarone used to be something that was uh, that you really wanted to tuck your bib into your into your neck and get a big knife and fork for. This today uh, smells like. Um, it's not. It's not going to be quite as uh, baronial and, uh, and statuesque as I, as I want from Amarone. Uh, there's a quite a nice uh, cherry edge here, but uh, it's on that gentle side. It's not as wild and earthy and volatile as, as sometimes I think Amarone should be. But it smells like it's going to have a good, honest flavour. Uh, but maybe it's not as amarine or amarunine as uh, I want it to be. Anyway, better taste it, haven't I? And then when you taste it, there is a little bit more of that warm boldness. Juicy fruit, cherry jam, uh, a little bit of uh, black currant, a little bit of blackberry in there. Uh, and a slightly dry finish. Uh, I mean, they, these, these are uh, made from uh, the, the extra, from, from grapes that have shriveled up that little bit. So you, you'd expect a little bit of dry tannins. Maybe I'd like a little bit more voluptuous fruit flavour to, uh, to coat those tannins. But as with the bulgur, it may just be that these need time to come out of the, the, the well, they come, come out of their shell. Probably say the same about the Barolo as well. Barolo is one of those wines that um, when you uh, when you have proper Barolo, you need to give it space both uh, to t to come out of the bottle and also nice space in the glass to uh, give it a swirl round. So I'll come back and uh, visit these later, and if anything drastic happens, I'll report back to you. In the meantime, I will say. Goodbye. See you soon. So, stop press. It's the final one of the quartet of uh, uh, of Little's Italian uh, Reds from the, 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 the set of wines that are going to go in in the end of November. And I've got it here. It's the Chianti Classico Reserva 2011 uh, Cassato di Medici Riccardi. Funny, I, I, I smell it, and there's bits of the wine I really like, and there's bits of the wine I'm not so sure about. There seems to be a nice core of, um, uh, of blackcurrant tea, cherry, fruit, but then there's also something that's... Um, uh, it, it's a reserver, so uh, it's, it's got to be released a little bit later, and some of that extra time has got to be uh, been spent in barrel, I think. Not quite sure of the uh, full Chianti Classico regulations. Um, but it feels like I'm getting, um, uh, the, the fruit has made, is maybe not all the better for having been in the barrel for that extra time. Um, it feels like there's a little bit of a slight gawkiness and greenness from uh, from, from the oak. Uh, but also, the, the I, 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 I'm just wondering whether there's a little bit of oxidation too. Let's taste it and see where we get to. Yeah, I was talking about that black currant it's like cherry edge. Uh, there is that there, and it's still there. But uh, there's also this little edge of um, what I call apple oxidation. There's a, there's a slight bruised apple 
character starting to come through. Sometimes it works when you've got white wines. It adds a little bit of, um, uh, of um, extra nuance to, um, to wines, particularly white burgundy. I, I, get, I, get, I get that character in there quite a lot. But with red wines, at this stage in a wine's life, you want a little bit of, of juiciness and vibrancy and uh, vigour. And um, it just feels like it's um, dampening the pleasure down. Um, it's okay. Uh, I would probably, yeah, finish my first glass and then wonder whether there was something else there. Um, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's the wine I'm finishing on, but uh, it's not as good as the Amarone was before, but hey, see you soon.